Uh, he's down in 13th place before making that stop, and certainly not showing the sort of pace that he did early on in the practice sessions on Friday, but of course really having to get back into uh, driving one of these cars and thinking it through the whole race distance in terms of getting the handling of the car right all the way through the 500 miles. Back on board with Gilles de Ferran briefly. As you can see, Andre Ribeiro, the race leader, is not far behind this battle for seventh place. He really is closing up to it. These two will desperately be trying to stay on the lead lap. And in fact, these two are the leading Goodyear runners now. Bobby Rahal is the top Goodyear car uh, in seventh place there. Gilles de Ferran also on the Goodyears, but uh, they're going to be swallowed up if they're not careful by Andre Ribeiro. And that's perhaps encouraging Gilles de Ferran to have a bit more of a go now at getting past Rahal. He needs to get past him. He cannot afford to be held up by the experienced veteran for long because otherwise he's going to be lapsed and he will not want to lose being on the lead lap. We also see that Greg Moore has come into the pits and uh, making his next scheduled stop. Third place car of Greg Moore there. He is pulling into the, into the pits there and Phil Lapan and the crew go to work on the player's car, the Reynard Mercedes Firestone tyres there, of course, fresh set of tyres, full tank of fuel, that's 35 gallons of methanol on board that car, and uh, in about uh, 12 seconds or so, he'll be on his way. Uh, here we are back on board with Gilles de Ferran, he's going down the back straightaway there with uh, the Miller light car of Bobby Rahal in his sights. Rivero still hasn't been able to get past him. Mark Blundell with the fastest of the top three uh, in terms of an average speed on that last lap. Still those 17 seconds behind the race leader, Andre Rivero, and still concentrating on staying on the lead lap. So there we go with uh, Mark Blundell just a little further back. There he is. And Greg Moore and he running in... Uh, well, no, sorry, Greg Moore's just been in. So Mark Blundell now moved up to third position. Great to see, though, that Adrian Fernandez is still running in fourth position. This is really the best performance that we've seen from Fernandez all year long. But I know that Guy has now joined Michael Andretti down in the pits. Michael is sitting here on the uh, pit wall. Michael, what seemed to be the problem? The engine started to overheat, and uh, it brought me in before it blew up, would blow up and put me in a wall. There seems to be a bit of a theme here. We've spoken to Ralbo Sal and Brian Hurt at both boards. Do you think it's a Ford terminal problem? or Is there heat affecting the cars? Well, I think the heat had something to do with the overheating, for sure. Um, we thought maybe we caught something in a radiator, and we checked it, and there was nothing. And uh, so, so it's a heated a day, you know, we just weren't able to cool it enough. And how about for you? Did the heat affect you out in the car? It's pretty hot out here today. I felt really good. Uh, the track was really good. I couldn't believe how much grip there was out there, as hot as it is. So from that standpoint, I uh, had no problems. Thank you, Michael Andretti. We'll see him, of course, in 1998 when he's re-signed for the team. So Michael Andretti out of the race, but Andre Ribeiro is still leading this one from Maurizio Gutemann and Mark Blundell. Yellow flags flying, and uh, we've got the oil flag out as well. Now, whether it's just debris, yes, it is. It's debris on track at the moment, so no major disaster, but uh, the card officials deciding that they've seen something out on track at the moment. And uh, we've also had reports that Guterman has come in because he had a cut tyre. So that's dropped Guterman down the order. In fact, uh, down to seventh place now for the man who was running in second. There is the race leader, Andre Ribeiro. And this could help him because he could get a chance to come into the pits under a yellow flag now. The pits will be closed for the moment, though. He'll have to wait until he gets the signal. It's extremely good news for the Tasman duo there, Ribeiro and Fernandez and Vassar and Defer and the only other two on the lead lap at this stage and they will be able to make a pit stop under yellow now uh, without therefore losing a lap like all the other guys did out to pit under green so a tremendous break for those four cars. Well uh, Cindy Crawford who's watching uh, part, of, part of this uh, race as well and Greg Petsky also with uh, Cindy Crawford down in the pits and keeping an eye on uh, of all this. Greg Penske there, of course, the son of Roger Penske and the president here, the, uh, the man in charge of the California Speedway. He's the guy who's put this whole facility together. And the sensational job he has there is a wonderful view of this first-class facility. And just uh, down on the pits is Guy Hobbs. He's got some more news on what happened to Maurizio Guterman. Yeah, I'm in the Pac West pit right now. I just spoke to Mark Moore of uh, Mauricio's car. I said, did you have a cut tyre? And he says, no, but we're coming in to change the tyres, and they're going to come in and do that pretty soon. OK, thanks, Guy. So uh, Guterman will be coming in, but he has dropped down the order already. So we've got Ribeiro leading Fernandez second, Vassa in third place now, and then Gilles de Ferran in fourth place. And he's managed to uh, stay on the lead lap just about. Next up is Bobby Rahal in fifth place. Billy Baldi in sixth, then Gujam in seventh at the moment, then Moore eighth, Jordan ninth, and Mark Blundell down in tenth position. And we're going to see a few of those cars 
make their way into the pit lane. There is Andre Ribeiro then, race leader, into the pits. And this is a vital stop for the Tasman crew, seeing their man up front at the moment. In fact, both of their drivers up front. A bit of a front wing change. You can see they uh, adjust the front wing angle with those levers at the front. And out he comes once again. A couple of other cars coming in at the same time. Jimmy Vassa comes into the Canassi pit, which is right down the far end. Also, Gilles de Ferran. And there is Adrian Fernandez having his pit stop. The other of the Tasman cars. And he was in second place, remember, before they came in. We talked about Adrian just a little bit long, a little bit a while ago. He was, uh, you know, his confidence taken a severe beating here with that car this year. It's just, it's just sapped his confidence completely. The car has been very inconsistent to drive, and a problem there for Jimmy Vassar. The car came off the jacks there, and they haven't finished changing the right rear wheel. But uh, seems to be all okay there. They get the car back up in the air, get the wheel changed, and Vassar on his way. He will fall, however, behind the uh, third place car which will now be Gilles de Ferran so the Tasman cars out in front and Gilles de Ferran in third place and Jimmy Vassar out back on the track there in fourth on board now with Scott Pruitt and uh, he's deciding to come into the pits as well this is uh, for the guys who are a lap down or more now deciding to come in Pruitt running in seventh position as uh, they came around this time, and in fact, quite a few of those cars, because we've only got a few cars on the lead lap now, in fact, we've got some like four cars on the lead lap, and so that's rather changed things around. In fact, the, the computer screen's trying to sort itself out at the moment, but uh, pretty much the story at the moment is the story of the two Tasman cars up front in this race, Andre Ribeiro and Adrian Fernandez. Indeed, yesterday, Jeremy, a uh, good day for Tasman Motorsports. I mean, they knew they were going to win the Indy Lights Championship, and sure enough, they did, but what an incredible Indy Lights race we witnessed here yesterday. So that wasn't for the faint of heart, was it? There were 18 cars in the lead battle there, and for, for quite a while, they were nose to tail side by side. All 18 cars were covered by about 1.6 seconds as they flew across the start-finish line at speed in excess of 188, 185 miles now. Actually, the fastest lap of the day was turned by Cristiano de Matta at almost 189 miles an hour. Remarkable race that was. It was won by Clint Mears, uh, who happened to be out front when the race was ended. Actually, it was a, a crash that uh, three or four laps from the end. It finished under yellow, but uh, a great run by Clint Mears, but a tremendous race. And Tony Canaan clinched the championship despite being involved in an incident earlier on with Robbie Unser. Tony Canaan actually made a couple of pit stops, came back out into the race at the tail end of the lap, finished ninth, and that was enough to clinch the championship. And uh, actually, those two are both bumped into Tony uh, Canaan and Elio Castro, now as his teammate this morning, and Steve Horn told the, pre presented them with a contract this morning, and uh, they, were, they were sure they were thinking it was to get all their stuff out of the transporter because they may not be with the team any longer, so not the Indy Lights team. In fact, it was an offer to drive the uh, Indy car at the end of this month, so those two were absolutely thrilled. On board with Christian Filippaldi's car at the moment. Christian running down in ninth place. We're under yellow flags, though, here at the California Speedway with uh, debris on the track. It's given a chance for some of the leaders to come into the pits and make their stops, but it means that Andre Ribeiro is still our race leader here after 123 laps have been completed, and we're almost at half distance now. Yep, that's right, not quite half distance, but very nearly in this uh, long, drawn-out first half to the race after a series of yellow flags, particularly in the early part. We had that delayed start when Juan Fangio's car caught fire dramatically before we even got the green flag. We had the accident to Paul Tracy. We also had the accident involving Arndt Meyer and Ari Leyendijk and as I mentioned earlier then uh, Ari Leyendijk and Arndt Meyer both uh, basically not badly hurt in that incident we will update you if you get any more information on that so uh, Fernandez in second place Gilles de Ferran is in third and Jimmy Vassa is in fourth now as we mentioned earlier on the drivers get involved in all sorts of different activities throughout the course of uh, race weekend and some of these drivers are also into things on two wheels as well as four wheels. And in fact, after Laguna Seca, the last round of the championship, some of the drivers took in, got involved in a motorcycle rally, getting themselves uh, out on some fairly major machines and taking uh, Highway 1, which uh, sees some pretty spectacular scenery of the California coastline. The Big Sur coastline, absolutely spectacular. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, there's uh, oh, tremendous fun for these guys. Beautiful uh, part of the world, of course, uh, coming down from uh, 
Monterey, where the Laguna Seca racetrack just close to Monterey, and heading down towards uh, Los Angeles. I don't know if they completed the whole journey by motorbike, but they certainly enjoyed themselves in some beautiful weather there. Now then, I do believe that uh, Guy Hobbs has got a bit of an update for us. Well, I was just down in the pit and watching those pit stops. The amazing thing is, Andre Ribeiro, when he came in, he came in behind, uh, in front of, obviously, Vassa and Fernandez. But he made his pit stop and was back out and back behind Vassa going down pit lane before Vassa even made it to his pit box, which means it was an incredibly quick pit stop, which leads me to wonder, did they get a lot of fuel in or enough fuel in to run a whole long segment without having to come back in again? We'll have to check with Steve Horn on that, but it seemed incredibly quick. Back to you, Ben. Well, that's an interesting uh, one there, Guy. I don't quite know what went on. What are your thoughts on that, Jeremy? You know, forgive me that, I was, I was actually concentrating on something else, Ben. There's, there's a bit of confusion going on here, I think, uh, in terms of the uh, scoring of this race. We're going green flag racing once again here as Jimmy Vassa, you ride on board with him coming along. Andre Ribeiro is the uh, race leader and he sets them off again to start lap number 126. Adrian Fernandez is second and then we've got a right old gaggle of cars all battling for position. De Ferran is uh, being shown as in third place at the moment and Jimmy Vassa in fourth position. So that's all looking pretty good. And that's correct, but uh, what they've done, they've messed this up, I've got to tell you. The top four should be a lap on their own, but in fact, under their old procedures here, that only the lead, the drivers on the lead lap were able to make a pit stop when the pits were first opened. But they've changed the procedure here now, and when they did that, when they made that pit stop, they effectively lost, lost their advantage and fell back behind the other drivers. So the other guys have been able to make up a lap, and that, uh, that's not right. That shouldn't have been allowed to happen. So uh, I'm confused here, and uh, I, and I shouldn't be. It's, uh, it, it's clear that someone's made a mistake here. Uh, and uh, we'll have to wait and see whether or not Cart realises that and resets the positions. The position's not been changed, but uh, half a dozen people have been allowed to, to regain the lead lap, and uh, the Tasman team won't like that. No, they won't. Let's, uh, let's just focus on what's happening on track, because De Ferran uh, just managed to move past Jimmy Vassa. You saw it on screen as uh, the Valvoline car fought his way past Jimmy Vassa, and De Ferran now running up in third place. Good effort, that, from Jill De Ferran, who in the early part of the race was running outside the top 10 remember we had that report of uh, a problem with the onboard jacks on his car but so far now he's really flying on the circuit you're watching bobby rahal at the moment he's down in eighth position behind Maurizio Gujman. Let me just quickly run you through the top ten and uh, hope that they... It looks as though they may be getting more up to date with what's happening. We'll check out on uh, that situation in a moment with our computer screens, but Ribeiro is the leader from Fernandez in second, De Ferran in third, Vassa is fourth, then Greg Moore in fifth place, Blundell is in sixth, Gujman in seventh, Bobby Rahal is in eighth, then Filippaldi ninth, and Michel Jourdain in tenth place. Still uh, showing many of those cars on the lead lap, which is not right according to our record, so we're still waiting to see if that gets sorted out. Well, it, it is right in actual fact, but only because... Um, <laughs> it's awfully difficult to explain this, but when those, those cars on the lead lap made their pit stop, they fell back, back behind the other drivers, and then... <laughs> it's impossible to explain. But uh, let me tell you... Basically, that, basically, well, we should, they're going to be upset down there in the pits, aren't yeah, they? They feel like they're going to have lost out. Yeah, I think if Guy can go uh, along there and have a word with Steve Horn, I think uh, maybe Steve can explain the situation somewhat better than I. <laughs> but at the moment, we're showing uh, seven cars on the lead lap, with more Blundell and Gujamin all taking advantage of that uh, uh, stri slightly strange situation in the pits. An anomaly in the uh, lap scoring at the moment, but uh, at the... As it stands, Ribeiro is our race leader. That's a clear-cut thing. I mean, there's no doubt about that in anybody's mind so far. His lead is 2.8 seconds now over teammate Adrian Fernandez, And you're looking at Fernandez now, but he's got Gilles de Ferran bearing down on him. And this is a good battle, hotting up for second position. And uh, it's interesting, as I mentioned, to see de Ferran really beginning to make things happen now. Very patient in the early part of the race. And now closing up behind the Lola of Adrian Fernandez. I'm sorry, I owe you an apology. In actual fact, Gujelmin, Moore and Blundell had made their pit stops right before, hadn't they? So they did not come in again uh, after that second... Uh, after, when the leaders came in the pit stop. I apologise, that was my mistake. In actual fact, because of that yellow, and then the, when the leaders came into the pits when the field had bunched up, they did in fact regain the lead lap. I owe an apology there, folks. Um, we have seven cars on the lead lap, and that is perfectly correct. Well, Guy Hobbs has uh, caught up with Steve Horn down in the pits. Let's hear from him. Steve, 
at the moment, things are looking pretty good, running one and two. A bit of a surprise with Adrian running up that high in the low low. But in the last round of pit stops, we saw a very crafty move, and Ribeiro was able to make his pit stop, get back out, and on the track...